All right, you guys are going to be really excited about our next guest. James Sun is here. The title of this presentation, The NFT Playbook for Brands, Lessons from Balmain and Barbie. But he's going to be sharing, for one of the first times, the first combination of a physical good inspired by an NFT. So I'm going to let James take it away. Come on up, James. And uh, you need a clicker, right? All right, good morning. Um, thanks for being here today. I want to tell you a little bit about how brands are thinking about NFTs. Um, we've seen, obviously, a lot of work out there on generative art, um, indie artists, collectors' items, uh, collectibles, I guess. But with this downturn, um, what is happening in the scene? Are NFTs dead? No. They're changing. Brands are looking at how to use them as a utility versus just trying to make revenue from the art itself. So the market, it's very big for brands. Um, we've seen this stat before. The luxury NFT market will be a 50, $56 billion market by 2030. But there are major challenges that I want to tell you about. Having worked with Mattel and Balmain, major, major challenges around IP authentication, for example. That's a big one. So if an NFT actually gets out there, uh, who had the right to actually NFT it? Did they have the copyright? And is there going to be a copycat of derivative work right away? These are major concerns for brands. Um, the brand experience. Brands don't want to be known as just a two-dimensional image. They want to story tell their whole campaign. Uh, security, blockchain complexities, difficult customer experiences. Most customers in the uh, brand world are not uh, crypto natives. And so the experience has to be super easy. So these are some of the concerns that we've experienced. One big one. We launched a Barbie bomb on NFT. Three days later, somebody right clicked it and illegally minted it on OpenSea in three days. We're not talking about a little indie artist. We're talking about Mattel and Balmain. And so this is a really big concern. So this idea of plagiarism, of derivative work, copyright, IP, how are brands going to navigate this is going to be a very important question that us as NFT community and the Web3 community have to have answers for. So what were Mattel and Balmain's goals? Number one, they wanted to inspire creativity and innovation with new concepts. And NFTs, because of the smart contract, it's pretty cool how you can show who's involved. They wanted to drive increased sales of physical goods. And I would say this is probably one of the biggest initiatives of brands right now is how do you combine it with physical goods? Engage creator artist community. And they obviously wanted to increase the PR, social, and viral marketing with a headline that's really going to capture people's attention. The result, we had a 1.2 billion media impressions, zero paid advertising, zero paid marketing, 500,000 page views, and 20,000 people signed up to bid for this NFT. And the physical collection of the Barbie Balmain sold out. So this was a successful use case that NFT campaign can be paired with a physical goods campaign and succeed to drive real substantial revenue. So physical and digital is what we really focused on is using the NFTs to combine the campaign to drive revenue again. We wanted to focus on non-crypto users. In order for us to expand this audience of our world, we're going to need new people to come into the world and non-crypto users don't understand every part of NFTs and how to purchase them and we have to make it easier. And we wanted to increase engagement with an omni-channel touch point as well. How do we do that? We actually did a live ticketed event. So you had to RSVP to hear the CMO of Balmain, myself and Mattel's president about this campaign and what we were doing. And so we also offered a PO app at the virtual event. So now it's another touch point and engagement for both Mattel and uh, for, uh, for Balmain. This was really important for them. Uh, we have a patent pending video provenance technology at Mint NFT. And this is probably our biggest differentiator is that we really want brands to be able to story tell their NFT and also show IP rights. So for example, what we do is we add a video file that's created by the 
actual brand or the IP owner, we verify it with a legal contract backing the IP rights, and then we put the video in an authenticated server that is connected to the smart contract with the video ID in the smart contract to make it immutable, and we can whitelist NFTs, uh, smart contracts, and even marketplaces. Now, we can never prevent the right click, and anyone who comes up with that technology, please speak with me. But what we're doing is we're giving the brands an ability that if someone does right click and create an NFT that's not legal, that the brand could say, without this video provenance, that's not legit. So we're really curing the symptom, obviously, um, but this is at least giving the brands in another way to showcase which NFTs are truly theirs. So our solution, again, the IP attribution was super important. Easy onboarding of non-crypto users with a shared custody wallet. And then security was super important as well as multi-chain. So easy onboarding, you know, we don't have to have a MetaMask in our system. You could actually have an email address, a phone number, and set up a two-factor authentication, and we have a shared custody model. We also had to go through about four and a half months of due diligence from Mattel for the security aspect. Mattel sells toys to families. They care about security in a major way. So we created a stack that was really foolproof in terms of being able to support a brand and their requirements. This is super important to work with brands. And then last but not least, we show a multi-chain uh, kind of a future. So we don't tell them you gotta go with one chain or another, but we wanna support the chain that they wanna go with. And so we believe this is also an important aspect until we have you know, interoperability, brands are very cautious about which chain they go on. And for example, obviously Ethereum is the biggest one, but many brands don't want the backlash from potentially the whole eco argument as well. Because they're not in the business of NFTs, they're in the business of what they do. So it's really important to speak to that language. With that, I wanna share with you um, one last thing is we have an auction going live today, right now as we speak. And this is a really cool collaboration because it's Balm On and it's Jeff Cole, which is an artist. So an artist is coming together with a big brand, working with us and launching a shoe, a sneaker with an NFT. So I'm gonna show you the sneaker that was inspired and it's dope. I mean, this, this shoe is so cool, it's right here. And I believe that this is critical for us to get through this crypto NFT winter. We have to come up with use cases that are real. I mean, it's cool to buy art that you like, but if you know that the next person's not gonna purchase or hire, are you still gonna buy it? Some of you, yes, you will, and that's great. But if we're only relying on speculation that the art will go up higher or the NFT will go up higher, we're not gonna get through this crypto winter very easily. So how do we, as a community, build more use cases working with brands and not shunning the brands, but really working with them, speaking their language to help them drive meaningful customer engagement and revenue. Thank you.